pull up the groundwater lecture two quiz question. It's about caves. Uh, we're going to talk about that stuff right now. So uh, we're going to talk real briefly about something in the So this is really cool stuff. This is a picture here, like the video I took in Yellowstone. Um, uh, that picture my wife and I like to see. You can see look at the color of the water. It's like really like white almost. Those are all the dissolved minerals. What's neat about this is this, uh, so where we're soaking right there in that hot spring is actually one of their geothermal areas. It's actually right outside their power plant. So they have a, they have a geothermal problem. Yellowstone, you'll see places where like this one hasn't erupted since such and such time, or this one's never erupted, like we don't know if it ever will, uh, things like that. But hot springs can be really hot, like up to 104 centigrade. So if you're out just wandering around and you are someplace where there's hot springs you can get in, uh, test the water first. Like you need to be safe if you're hopping into one of these things because people do get cooked. Like it's not unheard of for somebody to be sitting in a hot spring and a bubble of superheated water to come up and cook you like a goose. Yeah, so you definitely want to talk to the locals first before you just go randomly jumping into any hot springs out west or anywhere. But a, a vast majority of them are safe. Uh, some of them have some radioactivity in them. Like this is stuff coming up from down the earth. Um, but you just have to kind of find out what's safe before you just go jumping into any old random hot water pot. Uh, some of them are boiling or above boiling. Like you'll stick your hand in and it will burn your skin off. It's that hot. Some of them smell like sulfur. All the dissolved minerals coming out of the rocks 
So uh, that's pretty much how hot springs and geysers develop. It kind of relates to our whole groundwater thing the other day. Let's talk about caves. Okay. So caves develop where water dissolves rock. Okay. In particular, the caves we're going to talk about are limestone caves. Limestone is very reactive, calcium carbonate is very reactive to any acid. And it just so happens we have this fantastic thing called acid rain. Um, it's actually totally natural. Rain is naturally acidic. Uh, we tend to put more acid in it because of our industrial processes. But the way rain typically naturally picks up acidity is that as it falls through the air, water absorbs carbon dioxide out of the air. Okay. Also, when it hits the ground, it also absorbs carbon dioxide from anything rotting in the ground. So soil itself, the rotting and decay of animals and plants, makes carbon dioxide, and the water will pick that up. So it becomes slightly acidic, it turns into carbonic acid, which is not dangerous, like you're not gonna walk out into a rainstorm and be like, ah, oh, the acid rain is burning my eyeballs, it's burning me. No, it's very, very weak stuff, like super weak. In fact, we put carbonic acid into your soda drinks to make them have bite. It's like when you drink Coca-Cola or Pepsi, they've got that bite, you know? It's because they've got acid in them. That's why it's also kind of a little bad for your teeth. That and all the sugar, right? So uh, the carbonic acid reacts, here's a little equation up here uh, of how you get carbonic acid. And then this stuff falls through the air, falls through the soil, infiltrates, and rocks naturally break and kind of crack in joints. And it finds those joints and it goes down them and it starts to enlarge them. I'm going to give you a much better picture of like how it happens here in just a second. So as the water infiltrates down through this rock, remember the rock's porous itself so it can move right through the solid rock too, but it likes to find the joints that are already there. And it starts to make them larger by literally dissolving away, it's called dissolution, dissolving away the rock itself. Okay, if you dissolve rock, you're going to make some stuff. You're going to make some salts. You're going to make some other minerals that are in liquid solution now. So that stuff's got to go somewhere. Maybe it washes out through an underground stream. Or maybe it gets redeposited. And we can end up with some really interesting stuff. But this is why the caves that will, if we get a chance to go into some, will have such weird geometries. Because you've got areas where the rock is harder. It doesn't dissolve as fast. Areas where it's softer. And then you've got the pre-existing cracks and joints that it wants to follow through. Okay. So... As you go through a cave, you start to see these weird precipitated stone formations. We call them speleothemes. This is what happens to the water that's dissolved the rock. It's now full of minerals. And as it drips from the ceiling, it starts to deposit, redeposit those minerals as, as it comes into contact with the air into these cool, crazy formations. That's my buddy Jocko there crawling through a cave in Missouri. Um, and these are, this is flowstone here. This is some, we refer to this as a curtain, like he's ducking under the curtain. Uh, it, this originally, this, this orangish colored stuff right here, if nobody had ever touched this, if no mud had ever touched it, no hands had ever touched it, it would be the purest white you could imagine. When you see it, it's like shockingly white against the backdrop of the cave because it is composed of the mineral calcite. Whoa! Bell ring. And the mineral calcite is very white. Now we've got some names for some of these things. A stalactite hangs tight to the top of the cave. A stalagmite will form right underneath of it. Why? Because as it drips, the drip from the stalactite it starts to make the drip build up from the floor with the stalagmite. And eventually they can connect and make a column. Now as these things first start out, they form something called a soda straw, which is kind of cool. So if you think about a drip of water coming from the cave ceiling, the minerals get deposited around the rim of the drip, not in the middle. So drip after drip after drip, it makes this perfectly cylindrical straw that hangs down from the ceiling. And if that ever gets closed in, it can start forming a whole stalactite. But usually there's just loads of these little soda straws in certain areas of the caves um, because it forms like that. It makes these little cool little ring structures. We'll take a look here at, I've got a whole, slew of random speleothemes here to show you. Take a look at some of these. No, I did not break these out of the cave. <laughs> that would be illegal. Look specifically at the end of that round one, that stalagmite, uh, that stalagmite, 
that you can see the hole where it used to be a soda straw, and it went down. So here's a much bigger one. And you can see like kind of how these things actually form. Yeah, it started around different this time. So these things actually uh, would have been pure white if we had, if, we, if they'd never been touched by human hands. These are pieces that have washed out of caves as they were broken off probably by horrible individuals. Let's show if we've got some. Thought I had some acid up here. But we'll put some acid on these down in the lab and you will see them fizz. You can dissolve this stuff right away. It's actually very easy rock to carve. You can make recreating jewelry out of it, so it's just pretty soft. So you can pass those around a bit. Here's the slide. You're pretty much pretty close. Maybe the next slide. The next slide has a better description of how things form. But let's let's take a look at what a cave looks like. Um, I just got back from an area that had a bunch of natural bridges. So uh, that's where a cave collapses on both sides, and you're left with just the top. So it actually makes a big bridge across the land. They can be huge. But our area, and I'm going to ask you to use this word in your answer, our area of Indiana, not Columbus in particular, but all around us, contains a lot of karst topography. So what karst means is just landforms that have evidence of caves forming underneath them. Okay? So these are all parts of karst topography. We have sinkholes all over Indiana. If you head towards Bloomington in particular, you'll find loads and loads of sinkholes where all the limestone is. Um, has anybody ever seen a sinkhole? Yeah? They, they don't have to be huge. Sometimes they're just a depression in the woods. I think, um, I think there's one on my property. Is there? Because I have a cave. Oh, it's cool. It's like a mini cave. You can't get in it because it's like a really small opening. Uh -huh. And there's like these really two deep holes. Yep. But like, we don't know where they go. So if you get a shovel and start digging in the bottom of those, you might actually find where they go. How far away do you live from here? I live in Oglesville. Okay, yep. That would be an area that would have some caves. Yep, that's very cool. Maybe we should do a field trip out to your house and go explore them. <laughs> I'd be all about that. I love. I mean, I love caving. Spelunking is my jam. I love it. Like finding new locations and pushing to the furthest reaches of a cave, maybe where nobody's ever been before. And oh yeah, I've been stuck. I have been stuck. <laughs> it is, you know. Like I don't. I don't tend to get. Um, I don't tend to get very claustrophobic. But one time in a cave, I got claustrophobic, and it was terrifying. I had crawled. It was actually that cave my buddy Jocko was in. So he's a big guy. He wasn't anywhere near me. But I, had, I had crawled up into the ceiling of this cave. I had gone like up this little route where, where nobody had been before, because there were no tracks. And so I was up top of the ceiling, and I, there was a crack in it. So like people down below could actually see me. My friends could see me down there. And I was pushing myself along this crack. And I was going and going and going, and then I went out of sight for a long ways. But the, the chamber that I was in was only about maybe this big, so I could just barely put my body in it. And then it turned sideways. So it was narrow, but it was only about that high. So I had to lay on my side. And then my helmet wouldn't fit, so I had to take my helmet off and push it ahead of me, like this, you know? And so I'm squirming on my side like this. And eventually I kind of round a corner, and it goes like this at a right angle, and then back again at another right angle. So I'm you know, more than I'm really capable of. And I suddenly realized that like, I can't go any further. Like I'm really stuck, like I'm in there really deep. So I start trying to back out. And I start very slowly trying to push myself out. And my shirt, which I had tucked in, becomes untucked. It pulls up and makes a wedge, like right here at my armpits. And my arms are in front of me, there's no pull of my arms in, there's no pull of my legs in. I'm twisted sideways like this on my side. And I started cramping legs started cramping, my arms started cramping, and I was like in pain and terrified because nobody was coming to get me. I was like deep, deep in this cave. It was terrifying. <laughs> How did you get out? Very slowly, just being very calm and just like I'm talking centimeters by centimeters, I just slowly worked my way back out. It was a slow, agonizing process. I did, you know. Totally fun. If we, if we do get to go in a cave, I won't take you guys to any spots like that, trust me. I won't take you any place that I don't know. Um, 
but I, I really do hope I do get to take you guys in the cave because it is it's one of the funnest things like it's just so interesting and unique um, let's look at how these things form lots of features in Indiana we have disappearing streams where it goes for a ways and then it's just gone and it goes it might reappear somewhere else okay um, the caverns inside these things will have like almost like tears sometimes so let's see how that works out here's the nitty-gritty of how caves form here, okay? Oops, did I go too far? There we go. So, uh, what happens with a cave, and th this, is, this is the weird part, this is the part I want you to get down in your notes, or on, on your quiz. So, it's a series of stages, and the first stage in forming a cave is actually the water table being high enough. So, the caves kind of form underwater, like the rock is in the water. Like, see, it's dry land up there. Where the cave dissolves is right at the top of the water table. How about that? So think about that. So, so we're down underground. The limestone is exposed to water that's filled up to the water table. Right at that boundary, it dissolves the fastest. Okay. So you start to form this cave. Maybe for you know hundreds of years, the water table is very stable and dissolving at this level right here. It's making these big caverns, big chambers. Okay? Notice that there's no stalactites yet, or stalagmites. Okay? Then as we go further, the water table drops. Like maybe there's drought for 100 years. Water table drops down, and we start forming a new cave system underneath the original cave system. Because it's dissolving at the water table. So the dissolution's happening at the, at the water table. Now what happens in the chamber up top is we start to make cool cave formations. All those spelio things, all the stalactites and the stalagmites, they're drip stones. So water can't make drips underwater. So the drip stones all form when the cave's out of the water, when it's above the water table. It's still underground, but the drips coming through the ceiling make all those cool formations. Now, 100 years later, the water table could come back up and re-flood that part of the cave. So you could have cool formations that formed in the air, but they're now underwater. So a lot of weird stuff can form. So that's the real basics of, I wanna to go too fast here. You don't have to get all the nitty gritty down. Just get that bit about the water table, okay? These are all karst formations, all this type of landscape. Caves are karst, sinkholes are karst, disappearing rivers are karst, natural bridges are karst. Okay, so eventually, uh, we end up with, with further formation of car stuff where the ceilings start to collapse. So as the top erodes down, the ceilings start to collapse. So Lizzie, this might be what's happening on your property right here. Like deep underneath that could be a humongous cave system. And you're just now starting to get collapse from the top. And so if, if you were to dig one of those out, you might find an entry, a way in. <laughs> Even I, better. I found it when I was seven, so I have no idea where it is. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of caves where you go in, you enter through an opening that's just barely big enough to stick your head. Okay. And then once you're inside, it's a humongous, like, airplane hangar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> so let's look at a couple of caves here. Um, so... Uh, this is a sinkhole up top there. I'm in a cave. This is actually on Easter Island. I'm in a cave, and the ceiling has actually collapsed from the top of the cave. Uh, that's a tree that's growing out of it. I found that cave because I saw the top of the tree on the landscape. And I looked down, I was like, there, that's like the top of like a 30-foot tree. I'm like, uh, th that tree's got to go somewhere. So I walked out across the island, and I found this tree. I'm like, there's a cave here. This is so cool. So my wife and I got down in there. We actually rescued a little baby bird that had fallen down in there. We took him out. I have no idea what kind of a bird it was because I don't know the birds on the Easter Island. But you can see the picture. I took this one with the flash off so you can see what it looks like up at the top of the tree. It's pretty cool. 
there's all sorts of creatures that live inside caves. Uh, and they have funny names too. Uh, these are all photos that I took. Uh, this is a troglobite, is something that spends its whole life in a cave. A troglophile is something that just loves being in a cave for part of their life. And a troglodyte are people who live in caves. So sometimes you hear like the derogatory terminology like, oh, that guy's a real troglodyte, like meaning like caveman sort of thing. That's what that comes from. Like it's an actual scientific term. A troglodyte is a cave dweller, <laughs> for real. Um, this is cool. This is a shrimp over here on the left. That's, notice its color, totally white. Never been exposed to the sun, okay? So a little cave shrimp. And uh, up here is a, a salamander that I found in a cave. And that thing probably lives only part of its life in the cave, probably not its whole life. Um, but animals that live in caves permanently tend to lose, the, they evolve to lose their sight of their eyes. They lose pigmentation because there's no need for it in the cave. And it's not like the, you know, the cave shrimp's like, hey, be really nice not to have to worry about making color, you know? No, what happens is mutations normally build up in DNA. And if a mutation happens that knocks out your color genes, there's no benefit to having it or not having it, so it just gets passed down. Same thing with eyesight. Like, there's no benefit to having it or not having it, so as mutations randomly build up as they would, things that normally lost their eyesight would be eaten, but in a cave they're not. So they get to pass their genes on and eventually end up with whole species that have no eyesight, that are blind and white. Um, ooh, tell what that is? It's a geode crystal <laughs> in the side of a cave with a bat in it. Yeah, I actually put my hand on the side of this cave wall and leaned over and I was like, oh, my gosh, there's a bat there. <laughs> Just chilling out, little Indiana brown bat. It's pretty cool. That bottom right one, did anybody tell what that is? Oh, it took me a while. It took me a while. It's totally fungus, but what's it growing on? <laughs> it's a saltine cracker somebody dropped in a cave. It took me, I finally figured out the little holes that were in the cracker to figure out what the heck it was. I looked at that thing for a long time. But. So, we'll close that off. Everybody got their answer.